Hi everyone, my name is Allison Sir. Um, I graduated UCSB 2020. I was a political science major and affiliated with Alpha Chi Omega, and I'll be your moderator for today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pass off to Trevor, and then we'll go down the line with Allison, Chris, and Jeanette to introduce themselves. Hey everyone, nice to meet you. Super glad to be here today with everyone. Thank you all for coming and to the tech panel today. Uh, my name is Trevor and I graduated from UCSB in 2017 as a communications major. Um, I started my career working at Yelp for a couple of years, um, worked at a couple other various startups as well. And most recently I've been working as a digital strategy lead on the accelerated growth team at Google. Uh, I think you said Allison was next, so I can pass it over to her. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Allison. I graduated from UCSB in 2020 um, with a BS in computer science. Um, I've been working as a software engineer at Amazon for a little over a year now. Um, yeah, I'll pass it on to Chris. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Chris Ramirez. I uh, graduated with a sociology degree in 1998, um, affiliated with uh, Lambda Chi Alpha. I, um, started my career in telecommunications uh, and have continued on that path uh, through uh, uh, working with major OEMs and startups uh, throughout my career. Most recently, I'm chartered with uh, uh, leading the sales and operations uh, efforts at, uh, at my current uh, telecom firm, which is a nationwide firm. And I'm uh, super happy to be here and uh, I'm looking forward to a lively discussion. Jeanette. Great. Hi, everyone. I'm Jeanette Gibson. I graduated UCSB uh, degree in communications in 1992 and associated with uh, ADPI. I have spent my career for the last uh, you know, 20 plus years in uh, marketing and corporate marketing and digital marketing. Started out my career in public relations at agencies and moved on to corporate. I worked at um, large companies as well as startups, and now I run my own consultancy. Looking forward to being here. Okay, all right. Thank you for the introductions, everyone. Um, we can go ahead and get started with our first question. Um, and it's, the tech job market is competitive. What can I do to stand out as a candidate and land my dream job? I'm gonna give an opportunity for each panelist to speak on this, and then we can first start off with Trevor. Thanks, Allison. Yeah, definitely agree with you there that it is super competitive to get into the tech industry, but as you can see, you know, not all of us here in tech were, you know, software engineers or had computer science degrees. There's a lot of different things you can do to be in the tech industry. Um, I would say one of the biggest differentiators or biggest things that I would recommend to students that are still in school or about to graduate is get an internship while you're in college and learn about what you like doing, what you don't like doing. Um, a biggest thing when you're applying to jobs is having some kind of differentiator that's going to you know, set you apart from other people that are applying as well. And if you've had an internship or multiple internships, not only does that allow you to, you know, hone in on your skills, see more about what you want to do in your first job in your career, but also have some great, you know, things on your resume that'll allow you to stand out from the rest of the competition. Like my first internship when I was in Santa Barbara was in accounting, quickly realized I didn't like accounting, uh, switched over to like doing uh, sales and marketing as well. Um, figured I had a passion in sales, really like doing that. And that's what kind of led me to the opportunities that I was pursuing after college as well. So I think right off the bat, that's one of the first and best things you can do to separate yourself when you're trying to break into the tech industry as well. Thank you, Trevor. Um, thank you for sharing your experience. Um, Jeanette, would you like to go next? Yeah, I think it's a good, um, to add on to what Trevor said about internships, I think you know, since I was a comm major and have been working in tech my whole career, I found it really helpful just to be curious and do find as many jobs or internships as you can. So when I was at UCSB, I worked at the yearbook, the radio station, um, the KTMS News Talk Radio and KSBY TV, because I wanted to learn as much as I could about communications and what that job would be. And because of working um, at the TV and radio station, I realized I didn't want to go into journalism. <laughs> and again, you learn what you don't like. And so I ended up you know, getting a job out of college at a PR agency and found that I loved it. And I think um, one thing I noticed a couple of years later in an interview trying to get to a startup, they saw that I worked at the yearbook and that was the thing that put 
this one hiring manager over the edge because he was impressed that I worked at the yearbook. So you never know what an employer is going to be excited about. So just get as much experience, whether it's sports or clubs, as you can. Um, and that'll show that you're responsible and hardworking. Thanks, Jeanette. Um, Allison, do you have anything to add for this one? Um, yeah, I think um, what Jeanette and Trevor said, both um, amazing points. Um, definitely getting an internship is super helpful to help you stand out. Um, I think something in like the application process of when you're applying to your dream job or when you are looking for a job is uh, making sure you're a strong candidate and that can be done through getting your resume thoroughly reviewed, um, looking for um, you know people who are in the same industry that you wanna go into, having them review your resume, having people um, like maybe a recruiter that you know, someone who goes through a lot of resumes cause that is kind of like the starting point of um, kind of like landing the job is you know getting your resume reviewed first. So making sure you have a really strong resume. Um, and then I think networking is really big. So um, to stand out from everyone else, making sure you have like uh, good connections um, and that can be done through, you know, reaching out to random people, um, asking a friend to introduce you to someone that you can see that is, like they know through a mutual friend, um, building your network is super important. And um, yeah, I think those are the most important points in my opinion. Thanks, Allison. And to ask more about your networking, um, how did you get started with networking? What were some tips and skills that you have accomplished to build your network? Um, so something that I like to do is um, if I am looking for a job, I will go on LinkedIn and look for people who are currently in that position, try to find something in common with them, like whether maybe they were in Greek life, if we were the same major, if we were part of the same club, or just like anything in general, or, you know, like anything you can think of that you can have some sort of common point to. Um, what I like to do is kind of make that like the subject line of the message, um, like reaching out. I saw you were um, also an 80 pi at um, a different college even. And then, you know, finding some sort of thing that you have in common, be like, do you have 10 or 15 minutes to get on the phone? And then usually once you get on the phone, you um, can get to know them, they can get to know you, and then you've already built a connection there. So that's kind of one of my favorite ways to network. Great, thanks, Allison. And finally, we have Chris to answer the first question as well. Yeah, I think we covered uh, most of the very important parts of this. I would just, uh, the only thing I would add is um, once you do land something or you're in a current role, I would say be a sponge. Uh, soak in as much of the um, experiences and the uh, ancillary uh, job descriptions that surround you within your company. Learn as much as you can about the industry and that'll help you make some very informed decisions because the more data points that you have moving forward, the better decisions you're going to make, and you're going to be able to formulate a real, a real plan for yourself and and put yourself on a pretty good uh, a path to go to wherever it is you, wherever it is you want to go. Thank you, Chris. Um, we're going to go on and move to the second question. Trevor and Jeanette will take this one. How do I get started in the tech industry, especially if I have no tech background slash experiences? Example, how can I market myself for roles in tech coming from an econ or comm background? Trevor, would you like to start us off? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of goes into the first question as well. Like, you know, when you're looking for new jobs, you, know, you definitely want to have something that sets you apart. But I think like there's a lot of different like personality and different um, attitudes you can have as well that'll really be helpful. Uh, when you're trying to start out in the tech industry. And I think like one of, there's probably three that are like major ones. I would say first, like being a good listener and being naturally curious always. Kind of to what Chris just said, being a sponge, being that person that um, you're always trying to learn. You're always going out of your way to ask other people if there's things you don't understand. Like if just because you don't understand something or you think that that's gonna be too much for you to learn or something like that, there's always other people that felt the exact same way. And there's always people you can reach out to that'll remember they were in that spot as well. So. That's one big thing as well. I think in any anyone that is in tech as well knows that it's always you know going to be very flexible and there's always going to be things that are changing within the tech industry at, at any given time. 
Um, I think being adaptable is something that's really, really big. And when you're break, trying to break into tech, you know, maybe you're working at a small startup and they completely pivot how they're positioning the product in the industry, or they're taking everything a different way one day after they completely said something to you the other day. That's going to happen all the time. And the better you are at being flexible and being able to adapt to those like ever changing scenarios um, is something that's going to help you. Like, I think for me, for example, I got laid off when COVID happened, right? I was doing really good. I was one of the top sales reps at one of the companies I was working at. And just because the industry collapsed, there was nothing I can do to control it. But I was flexible. I said, hey, no problem. You know, there's other jobs out there for me. I have this great skill set. I have this great, you know, school that I've gone to that I have on my resume that I'll always be able to put on there. So i um, always trying to, you know, embrace change and being that, you know, wh when it happens, not being, uh, you know, rigid in your ways as well, I think is something that's really big. Um, and I would say, lastly, this is something that at Google is really a little bit cheesy, but it's be Google, be that person that stands out on your team or in your role, you know, um, be that person that will do that extra task. I know sometimes in college, you don't want to be that person that raises your hand to answer a question because you don't want to stick out in front of everyone. Like at your job, you need to be that go-to person. And this is kind of, kind of what we talked about a little bit before as well. And like building your network is you never know when someone is going to need someone with your skill set. And if they remember that you were always that go-to or that, you know, person that would go the extra mile, they'll reach out to you. They'll say, Hey, I need you for this role. And I guarantee, like, I have so many friends that this is exact same thing has happened to. So going that extra mile, doing that extra step in your role and being that kind of go-to person on your team is something that's really big and will set you apart from everyone else um, and lead you to a lot of success as well. I agree. No task should be too small when you first start out. Um, do, <laughs> do you have anything to add to this? I think that's a great point. Um, no, I think being confident in your skills and know that you'll learn on the job as well is another thing um, because, um, you know, as a comm major in tech, I think you know, I didn't have to know technology per se, but being able to be, you know, able to raise my hand and use my skills like uh, researching and, and communications and writing and all that. So yeah, no, I think they made a great point. Awesome, thank you for that. Going on to our third question is, technology is a massive field. How do I narrow my field of interest? And what are some resources I can look into to learn more about emerging technology slash jobs? So um, Allison and Chris will be taking this one. Allison, would you like to start us off? Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, tech is a very massive field for sure. Um, and there's a lot of different sub industries within tech. I think that the best way to learn more about um, the specific kind of bubbles in tech are to talk to someone who's working in it. You can read like tons of stuff online, but I think nothing really compares to hearing firsthand from someone. Um, like I said earlier, I think it's really helpful to reach out to people on LinkedIn. Um, any of the panelists here, we're all kind of like in different um, parts of tech. So, you know, feel free to reach out to any of us. But I think it's super cool to talk to someone directly to hear about their experience, to hear if you like it or not, because your first job out of college is um, a really good opportunity to kind of narrow down your career path and to choose, like, you can be really picky about what you want to do because it is your first job. And obviously later on, you can change your career path. Everyone, you know, has done it. Everyone does it. But I think that you should take the opportunity that you have with your first job to kind of really pick something that you're interested in. And even though um, when you first graduate, you kind of think, I'll just take anything I can get. Um, I think it is pretty important to, um, you know, choose something that you actually like and you're actually interested in. So, yeah. Thank you, Allison. And Chris? Yes, those were the, all, all excellent points. I think uh, what I would add in touching on the LinkedIn thing, uh, I think LinkedIn for me personally has been uh, a, a tremendous resource. Um, it's really easy to go and follow key players in technology fields. And these people are always um, uh, posting and throwing out information on, on key initiatives and changes in the technology field. Uh, uh, as we all know, technology is changing on a regular basis. You can follow... Um, some of the major uh, uh, firms that are out there, I, I personally follow Nokia and Cisco, and every time they there's a new technology being developed uh, or any trends in the industry, um, LinkedIn is a really good resource to understand that. And again, it's all about the data points, right? 
Um, you want to join groups. Um, there's there's various technology groups. I'm involved in you know 5G wireless technology groups uh, on LinkedIn and other places. Uh, Allison was uh, pointing towards different trade publications. I think those are valuable in my industry because they they do a deep dive into a lot of the trends that are occurring in within technology uh, publications such as Light Reading and Wired and things of that nature. Uh, and then finally, uh, one of the resources that I really like to tap into is I, I mentioned Nokia and Cisco. A lot of these technology companies are uh, publicly traded. So you can go on and uh, go on their, their websites and take a look at their quarterly and annual reports. Within the pages of those documents, you'll find uh, you know, their CEOs and their operations, C-level or C-suite uh, executives will outline clearly what their uh, what their strategies are and what kind of you know uh, trending plans that they have uh, moving forward. So I think those are valuable uh, data points to take into uh, uh, consideration when you're when you're starting your path down uh, in the technology industry. Thank you, Chris. And I think that's a great segue to Lily's question in the chat. Um, which industry within tech do you see largely expanding over the next ten years? So I have this open to any of the panelists if they have an answer. I'll jump in and say one thing I've seen in tech really come to prominence is around data analytics and being able to gather data because there's so much out there from the web, from various apps. So um, that is a great starting level job too, to be an analyst in tech. Um, but I think anyone that has an interest in data, there are a lot of job opportunities out there for you. Okay, moving on to our next question. Thank you, Jeanette. The fourth one is, how do I know I have the right amount of skills to start applying for tech companies? And what are some hot skills right now in the industry? And the panelists who will be answering this will be Allison and Trevor. Um, Trevor, you can kick us off. Yeah, I would say hot skills to have in the tech industry. Definitely um, in, in my side right now, you know, in the sales side, it's, it's a lot of like building interpersonal skills, but also, you know, having the, the background for yourself um, that, just knowing that like you are able to do it um, if you put your mind to it as well. So it's not like just because I'm not from a background of, um, you know, engineering or anything like that doesn't mean that this is something that I can't break into. I think going back to what I said earlier as well, like learning in the beginning what you're interested in and what you're good at is, is really big. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do in an internship. If you start at a small company, I highly recommend if you're trying to break into tech, starting at some kind of small company, you're going to wear a lot of hats. You're going to do a lot of different things, but it's going to give you a great opportunity to see what kind of things you're passionate about and what you're good at, right? Like, what are your strengths when you're um, working on different things? When I started, I was working at like a 32 person tech company. I was doing some marketing. I was doing some sales. I was doing a lot of like traveling to trade shows and things like that. And like, that was like, what I felt was really big as well. So I think the biggest thing is like just taking what you're interested in and, you know, when you're at a tech company or um, when you're starting at your internship or anything like that, ask to do different things and see what kind of different opportunities that you realize are like big things for you and um, what's really important for you. But um, yeah, Allison might know more if there's any kind of like coding or anything like that. That's like a hot skill right now. I probably wouldn't know anything about that, but um, yeah, I think this kind of um, really depends on the specific job title that you have, because um, in my role, yeah, obviously, it's very important to have some strong programming skills. Um, that is probably not the case for um, a lot of other jobs. Um, but yeah, I think um, in tech right now, I've seen um, people in all types of uh, positions in tech are kind of starting to um, work with coding in their everyday jobs, whether it's like a marketing role or design roles. So I think um, it's an important thing to learn. You obviously don't have to um, you know, be a master in it, but it, I think it could be um, helpful to take like an intro to Python class or something like that. Um, but yeah, I think it does definitely depend on your specific job. For me, I've noticed that um, Something I didn't think that would be really important was to be good with technical writing, but it turns out it's actually um, an important skill to have. So there's kind of a, it really depends on what job you work with, but I think no matter what job you have in tech, it's important to um, be able to work collaboratively with people. Um, it's important to um, 
be able to, I think, you know, technical writing could be a good skill, no matter what job you have, being able to um, explain in words um, clearly what you're trying to convey. Um, yeah, I think those are kind of the most important skills. And, and Allison, going back to the last question as well, I think in terms of hot things right now in the tech industry, I really am seeing a ton of growth in like the internet of things. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing companies like, um, you know, Aura Ring or um, what's the other one, the Whoop, the one that you wear around your wrist, like all of those like wearable. I know Apple is like investing a ton of money into that as well. I think that's going to be huge in the next couple of years. Um, and I think the other space is cloud as well. As you see a lot more companies like digitizing now, I think in the next 10 years, cloud will continue to grow. I know personally, like Google is investing a lot into cloud. There's other, you know, huge players in the space as well, and it continues to grow every day. So in terms of what's growing right now and what industries, I think, you know, those are two other ones to add on top of what Jeanette already said as well. Yeah, Trevor, uh, that's that's a great point, too, uh, because I see um, like some of the old legacy uh, like cable companies, for example, they have aging technologies in these big central office uh, spaces that they're decommissioning old legacy equipment and they're turning they're converting those those offices into uh, cloud based or, 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 or buildings with cloud based platforms so that they can get information to the end user on the mobile devices faster. So I think you're spot on there. Awesome. All great points. Uh, thank you all for answering that. We'll, we'll move on to the next question. Um, it's what has helped you get to where you are, influential or effective in the forefront, and what advice would you have for others who want to set off in a similar direction? And this question will be directed towards Jeanette and Chris. Okay, I'll Jeanette. jump in and kick us off. So many of these themes have been discussed already, but I think for me, I think having a positive mindset at work is really helpful because if you have this kind of can-do attitude, then again, and you raise your hand and willing to learn, then your boss is going to give more projects to you. You're going to get more opportunity. When I was hiring uh, people, I'm always, I would look at their mindset and their skill set. And even if they had a lower skill set, but they had a great attitude, I would hire the person that had the better attitude because I know they'd be a better fit in the company. So, so keep that in mind. Um, the second is being a team player. We've talked about the importance of that here already, but just getting along with your colleagues is so important. You spend all your time with these people. So just know that at work, you're gonna to have to do projects. You're gonna to have to get stuff done with other people. And I think that helped me grow in my career because I could collaborate with other departments. I was in marketing. So if I had to work with engineers or IT, I, you know, or HR, I was able to form relationships. So understanding that building relationships is going to be really important in your career. So keep that in mind. And then the third, I would say, we talked about networking, but I think also find ways to network in your industry, um, whether it be meetups or conferences. I realize it's challenging now that everything is still, you know, remote, but as much as you can, look within your industry and see if there are certain conferences you can attend or ways you can meet more people to meet your peers or even competitors. I would always go to conferences like the American Marketing Association or any of those and I would meet my peers and then I would be able to use like best practices from those from their speeches and from meeting those folks to bring to my job. And that helped me because I would show my boss that, hey, I've made relationships. So for me, when I was at Cisco Systems, the, the networking company, I would bring in all my friends from Dell and Intel and Adobe to speak and share their experience. And that helped me improve my influence in the company. So I would say, um, and also when I was at Hootsuite, you know, we, we had big clients. And so I would able to, you know, bring them in and form relationships. So just keep, keep networking as much as you can and learn as you grow and, uh, and stay positive. Those are all great points, Jeanette. I agree 100%. Uh, the only thing I think I would uh, add is, um, at least for me, especially early on in my career, um, I found that it was really important for me to find a good mentor um, and, or mentors uh, to help guide me through uh, whatever decision making patterns I was going to go through, uh, especially early on in the career. Um, these are all, you know, I put my faith in people that I trusted. Uh, these are all people who have experienced great success in the industry that I was calling my own, um, and they've already laid out a roadmap to success. And, uh, you know, there's going to be changes to that roadmap throughout your career, but I think having good foundation in the form of uh, trusted advisors 
is something that really helped me throughout uh, my career personally. Um, I think the other thing uh, that I would that I would uh, suggest is don't be afraid to fail, especially early on in your career. You're going to make mistakes. Learn from them. Be accountable. Be accountable for them. And as you're accountable for those mistakes and you're learning, you're also building your brand and your reputation within the industry um, and within your company. Um, and so that goes a long way uh, when people, you know, down the line. Are listening to ideas that you have or strategies that you have they take you more serious and um, i think you can be a more effective um, uh, influence and voice within your company and the industry as you as you go down the line so those those are the couple the two things that i would add thank you chris and jeanette we do have a question in the chat by aj how has the pandemic affected the tech industry and how has it affected people trying to break in um, I'll open up to any of the panelists who want to speak on this. Great question, AJ, by the way. I'll just I can jump start. In and I would say, say okay. go ahead, Trevor. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I feel like I'm like I'm only three three years into my career, but I feel like I'm a perfect example of this in that I was doing really good in the tech industry. I had just broken in and I got completely laid off out of nowhere um, when the pandemic hit. So I think in, in terms of on a broader scale, a lot of these tech companies that were, you know, ramping up super quickly, seeing this exponential growth year over year, like when the pandemic hit, that all just kind of came to a halt. So um, definitely threw a wrench in things and like wasn't part of anyone's plan. But I do think now things are moving back in the right direction. All those companies that like let people go are getting those people back on now. And I think right now it's honestly as hot as it's ever been, maybe even before the pandemic as well, in terms of like jobs that are available, in terms of entry level roles, like all of those people, you know, like similar to myself that were only a few years in or a lot of the ones that got let go in that case, and they need to rehire all those positions back. So I think, you know, if you're trying to break into tech right now, this is like one of the the best times to do it as everyone's trying to rehire after that. Yeah, go ahead, Jeanette. Didn't mean to. Yeah, I was going to say everyone's everyone's hiring right now because everyone's le everyone's yeah. left their jobs. Everyone has had this <laughs> moment where they're like, I'm really this is not my dream job or I don't want to be doing this. So we've seen the most movement at all uh, than ever for, for people to move around. So so I would yeah, I would say it's a great time because everyone's rethinking it. And also there's more uh, remote opportunities. Not everyone is going back to the office straight away. So I think there's a little bit more flexibility. I have several friends who have moved out of state to different places because they know they can keep their job and work remote. So just know there's lots of flexibility and lots of opportunities out there. Yeah, I think the other thing I would add to is um, uh, from a product development standpoint, a lot of firms are starting to develop products that are more scalable for home use. Um, and we've seen that we saw that in the first six months of the pandemic. Um, and I think that uh, here in the next you know, year to two years, you know, as soon as this uh, uh, global component shortage uh, starts to clear up. Uh, we're going to see some some very interesting technology hit uh, hit the streets that are going to be more conducive to um, remote remote working. Okay, awesome. Thank you, AJ, for that question. Um, another question I want to ask the panelists is why tech, and what are some ways from people from tech, the industry, are making a difference in the world? And this can be answered by anyone. I'll jump in and say, I, th I think tech is so fun because it's changing every day. There's new technology, new opportunities. Um, and coming from someone who has a communication degree and does marketing, it's really exciting to be able to always be focusing on innovation and how you're helping people change their lives, whether it's FinTech or health tech or all these areas. So I feel like I can make a difference just because the products um, are innovative. And I would say also just to keep in mind, you know, since I started out in agencies and I have friends that are in entertainment and other areas, I feel like you make more money in tech. So I think it's a smart choice because you have companies that have stock options and plans. And I feel like uh, that for the long term, it's it's really a hot market, hot area. Yeah, I would say that also um, as technology expands and develops uh, over over the years, um, 
we're giving opportunities, uh, especially uh, there's there's a there's a government plan called E-Rate, which is bolstering uh, broadband uh, technology within schools. So we're we're reducing learning curves for for children in school and and uh, allowing for uh, a greater knowledge base uh, where before it didn't exist. So um, and to your point, Jeanette, I mean, it's never boring, right? It's always changing. And if, if you're a year behind in technology, you're ancient. And, uh, and, and I like, you know, it, it plays into my, my ADD. So uh, it's, it's a perfect career for me because I'm, I'm never stagnant. Allison, do you have anything to add to why software engineering of all occupations? Yeah, so um, I really like tech for, you know, the same reasons everyone's been saying so far, super innovative, um, interesting. It's cool getting to work on um, new products. The team I'm on um, at Amazon, actually, we have a lot of, um, we have like our team that works on a certain technology and then we'll have like brainstorming use cases. And it's really cool because we'll just like all sit around together and we'll be like, okay, what can be a use case for this? We'll be like, oh, we can add like a, something on a dog collar to help you find your dog if they run away. We can add this to um, help add more security to your home. Like it's cool getting to brainstorm and come up with new ideas for um, use cases just in everyday life. And I think um, that's a really cool reason. And one of the biggest reasons that I love working in tech. Awesome, thank you for your responses. Um, another question we have, is um, what are the pros and cons of working at a small startup versus a large tech company? Not sure if you I'll, could- I'll jump in. I'll jump in because I've worked at both a startup and a really large tech company. Um, I think with startups, it's super fun because I worked at Hootsuite, the social media company. And I think startups are fun because you move so fast. You know, you're just, there's, it's not like you have red tape of a big company to bog you down. You're literally just like out there executing and getting stuff done. Um, and so I feel like it's really fast paced. There's not a lot of process to bog you down. You learn, you wear lots of hats, like was mentioned. Uh, Trevor said, you, you do different jobs. And so I think it's fun because you get to experience a lot of things and move quickly. I think um, some of the cons is there's not as much process or learning like formal learning, like large companies have really um, strong HR departments that have learning and development and training and large companies have that opportunity for, you know, um, you know, more um, structure. And as you get older, for me, for example, when I was at Cisco Systems, they had um, subsidized daycare. So, you know, a large company had benefits like daycare and things like that. So it's so for me, working at agencies and a startup early in my career, and then I spent 15 years at Cisco at a big company when I was raising my children was perfect because I could use all those benefits like daycare and stuff like that. And then I went back to startup land. So, um, but benefits to both. Um, it just depends. Uh, if you need more structure or if you really want to be more freewheeling and wear a bunch of hats and and be in that environment. Yeah, I, I agree to everything that uh, Jeanette just said. I, I'm in the, the exact same boat. I think when I started at Yelp, you know, one of the things that kicked off my career in such a good direction was that big process they had in place. I had a two month sales training school that was absolutely critical to like developing my sales skills right when I started my career. But after that, I worked at a 30 person tech company where literally when I onboarded, they were like, hey, there's no onboarding process, just shadow people. And we have like a running Google Doc. And if you think that there's anything else the people after you that get hired should add, then uh, add it on there. Right. And that was like the only process that we had. And there was definitely pros to, to both. Um, it's really cool working at a startup when if you have an idea about something and you say, hey, what if we like did this? They, you know, you have the ability and the flexibility to be like, yeah, let's go try that. If you want to do that, build that out and like, let us know what you think. Um, so I do think there's benefits to both. Um, and I do think it's really, it just really depends on what you're into. Like Jeanette mentioned, if you're um, someone that wants to have more flexibility and less process in there and like be able to, you know, really branch out and do what you want to do, um, you know, it's a great place to do that at a small company because you can always change roles if there's something else you're more interested in and you've been showing that you have the skill set to do that. Um, but it's also good as well if you want to start at a big company, there's going to be world class training for you. Um, they're going to have all the processes in there to give you everything that you need as well to succeed. So uh, there's definitely it's, it's fun working both ways and I would recommend people to, to try both if they can have the opportunity to as well. 
Thank you, Trevor and Jeanette. Um, that concludes all the questions we have for our panelists, but I'll open it up to anyone in the audience who may have any other questions we might not have asked. Um, a side note is that uh, our panelists are amazing. They're always willing to help people. So please reach out to them on LinkedIn. Um, feel free to set up a one-on-one -on -one with them. Meeting and learning about what they have done throughout their work experience has been very helpful for me personally as well. So definitely add them on LinkedIn. Um, they can pop in the chat the full name so you can add them. And feel free to reach out, um, even me. I'll be a great resource to anyone from the UCSB community. Um, but if you don't have any more questions, I can go ahead and pass it off to Brett, who can close us off for the session. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, Allison. Um, great panel. Hope everybody enjoyed it. And like she said, um, feel free to reach out. So the last two minutes of this is really um, the first slide. Um, so my name is Britt Terrell. I'm with Delta Tau Delta, the class of 85. So um, sadly, we had one of our members pass away this year, Dylan Flanagan, um, just last, last month. So he was a very active member of DELT's. Um, I recruited him onto the DELT House Court Board. He's been an active member when he was an undergrad, he was the uh, liaison. He got into uh, all gaucho reunion, which was our reunion, our, our, our all gaucho reunion, right? Greek fest, it is referred to. He's a committee member of, uh, or was a committee member of this, the Greek interconnect. So um, just, we are dedicating today's session to uh, Dylan for being just one of those strong standout UCS, UCSB gauchos that, uh, was a real contributor and we'll certainly miss, miss him. Um, the next slide um, is really our wrap up slide. So um, in the chat room, we will uh, post a few links. So one of the links is a survey. So please take a, you know, two, two minutes to fill out the survey because this is Greek Interconnect five. So next year will be six and we try to get a little better each year. Um, and then there's also the Gaucho Network, which if you all are not aware of this as an undergrad, um, it's, a, it's for undergrad and alumni, but please join it. It's a, it's a lot of um, UCSB Gauchos just trying to stay connected um, in a UCSB online format. And then there's a Greek component to that. So feel free to join both um, as well as LinkedIn. They're sort of, you can't over network, right? Um, and, and, and also, there will also be a link about everybody that participated today. Make sure that you fill out your information there and that'll be made accessible to all so all can communicate. Um, we're recording this, so this recording will be available. Um, and once again, Duffel has been our sponsor. And so for all those that you know asked questions, uh, they will be sending out uh, Duffel codes for um, Duffel dollars, which will uh, be directly uh, usable with future Duffel services um, as you live in Isla Vista. Um, and lastly, um, our Greek Interconnect Planning Committee, there's like 10 of us. We need like 20 of us. So feel free to join because um, it obviously takes a decent amount of work to pull this off. So thank you. Um, any questions, um, you know, post to the chat room, follow up with any and all. And um, I hope everybody enjoyed. And I guess until next year, but don't wait till next year. Let's start, you know, communicating and asking questions as of this week and uh, building your network. Okay. Anybody else have anything to offer? Please feel free. Well said, Britt. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Britt. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.